as Uzi will pull out the speciality pick. There's the Nico as anticipated, and you imagine probably the Vi will come out here for Jeje, mm -hmm. if not the Rakan, just because it's up and available. The Rel as well, also very high priority here. Uh, but I feel like you could pass over this, right? The Alistar's also up, and you could definitely take that side of the matchup. But EDG, no, want this Rel. And of course, technically, works as that flex pick too. Can go in the jungle, can go in the sport role, as we traditionally say. Technically. See. Yeah, I mean, just Kanavi's pulled it out, but yeah, we, we know most likely going to be in support, especially with Mako's play style, but I like that he flexed it around, and I like ultimately that Omji took away this Kai'Sa when some of his best games of split have been on that set pick, so despite the fact that this guy can flex 80 carries, we know that OMG are taking away one of his best with the uh, PP God Alistar into the mix as well. As you were flaring about before, Jamada, that buy's still on the table, and it is something for Aki that he can just pinch and make sure that JJ doesn't have. It feels like it's sticking out like a sore thumb. You're kind of surprised that EDG weren't happy to take like either side of the rail and the uh, Alistar matchup. But perhaps what the idea is here from EDG is you go Uzi's AD carry now, uh, Aphelios, you've got, uh, I suppose, I mean, what else really? I, I, in my mind, I feel like if it, I'm so tied to EDG having Aphelios that it should end up being that. But maybe they look at something super aggressive or defensive um, into what is a whole bunch of dives, something that can deal with Peel. Uh, for now, though, it seems like not super interested in holding on to this Rail Flex. They're going to go towards Nocturne. So looking at Dive and, you know, I like this. We saw a bit of a glimpse of this, of course, from IG where turn off the lights and then the Nico comes in. It's starting to kind of become a bit of a popular combo uh, that I'm seeing a lot more throughout the LPL teams as second ban phase. I imagine as EDG, you're probably looking here at mid laners that pair up very well. I wouldn't be too surprised if we see uh, Cream have actually a melee support, something uh, a melee uh, mid laner locked away. If not, just because it's Cream, oh, yeah. then I would anticipate something like the Syndra as that is one of the few ah. mid laners that has a pretty decent uh, one to one matchup with Nico. As you make the her, it's because that tax has to be paid. The vein is banned yeah. away from Uzi. It's just hilarious. No one else would get that vein banned against him. But uh, again, iconic champion taken away from the said man. Now, let's see if it's double AD carry ban in the end, because already we do have two ADs off the board by OMG. As the Akali, you mentioned that melee for cream that could be paired quite nicely. That option now lo no longer available. As we start pinching this mid lane pool, I mean, look, three from mid, two from top. ADG giving all the respect over to cream and charge. Yeah, plus the cannon. So. One target ban towards Uzi's champion pool, plus the cannon, so they're not dealing with the Venn diagram of death in darkness. I can respect that from OMG. EDG, let's see where they go. AD carry. Again, hyper carry in Aphelios. Jinx also up if they really want to go down that kind of route, but I feel like something, aggr yeah, something aggressive here to kind of pair up with what is, you know, effectively a very dive heavy composition from EDG would make sense. And the Tristana, it slipped to my mind because typically it's picked up so early on or to remove the way. As now OMG eyeing up potential Poppy wouldn't be too bad into a lot of the options for diving in that EDG have yeah. and just generally as a frontliner very very strong and that Keeper's Verdict is such a strong tool against things like the Nico. if you see her charging up in vision or just generally you try and remove the gravity well uh, of Mako out of the uh, equation very very strong tool to have and now again Cream looking for those lane matchups very uh spicy hover but I'd say again something along the lines of Syndra or uh, maybe even an Azir, I imagine, is what's probably coming out from OMG. If they do land on this Yone, it's very dive heavy in response. And a 2v2 at level 6 is very potent yeah. from OMG. And they're going to go towards it. I can respect it. I imagine the early laning phase has to suck. But once you get out of those first, you know, sort of 5, 6, 7 levels, and you get a couple uh, a couple of items for attack speed, the wave clear in response can definitely be something serviceable as now Allah. Looking for a counter into this poppy, very difficult champion to try and match up to in lane sometimes. Well, look, it still would be fun to see Arla on it in the top side. Already keen for this one to start up. As you mentioned, dive on the other side, EDG. It's not like their diving is limited either, Jamada. Both these teams want to go in quite fast and end the fight. Yeah, quite fast. First punch going to be huge here. I also feel like both these teams, funnily enough, don't really want to play front to back like ever. They want to find angles and they want to pick off high value targets. So I feel like we could end up with a very weird and intricate dance between both of these sides here where, you know, if you're first to the river and you're in the objective first, it might not even matter. Like it, these teams shouldn't really be looking for front to back setup. They should be looking for, you know, JJ to potentially turn off the lights and then have Fofo find the angle for it or, you know, Vi come out of a very weird uh, patch of fog for then Cream to follow up with a massive Ulmer and then everyone press their R keys and go in. This is 
definitely on both sides a situation where I think we're just in for a bloodbath. Nothing more, nothing yeah. less. I don't think there's going to be analysis to this one. I don't think there's going to be slow or a chess match where these guys are trading off objectives against one another. These guys should just be scrapping. I think that's the wink on here. They're just trying to slap each other with their wallets. Hopefully, that's what we want. We want out of OMG and EDG. We know OMG are so good at slapping people across the face. EDG, they have been interesting to say the least at the start of the split. It felt like growing pains to some degree. But then once they've come online, they've come real hard. And EDG now on a two win streak, eight and six for a reason. It's FPX, it's LGD, yeah. TT did beat them, yeah. But look, ultimately, you're still impressed with some of the recent performances. This team is bringing it all together. And against OMG, we'll see if they can get that final hurdle for a top six position, not guaranteed, but likely to be theirs. This series will be everything here. Oh, Jayos fly through. Yeah, EDG, you can imagine. People like Uzi. <laughs> oh, no. It's not even close, is it? No. It's not even close. I've never heard that big a disparity in Jayos before. That is crazy. Like, normally, right? And actually, speaking from experience, I've technically worked a Chinese crowd <laughs> during MSI. Like, oh yeah, like the, the crowds, they don't care. They just, they jio just for the sake of it, right? But that was absurd. The fans are here for EDG. And you have to imagine for Uzi, OMG, despite being in the Shanghai arena, it feels like they're in an away game, doesn't it? Oh, it definitely does. Look, you have no surprise though, again, since Uzi joined, EDG, they're already one of the most popular teams in the league, one of the most historic. As they invade to start off this game number one, it's going to be on a ward, and Uzi's isolated. Uzi with PP God and Abel, this could be dangerous. OMG are collapsing. This sandwich huge as PP God with the flash pulverized. Exhaust on the JJ. Uzi started W. The range is there, trying to hit away on Abel. He's separated. Uzi gets first blood, and that means a reset with the rocket jump out. Mako sacrificing his own life. And a one-for-one one is exactly what you want to see kick off this game. How in God's green earth is that just the one-for-one, one, considering how that kicked off? I mean, look, blood for the blood god. I did say this is probably going to be a bit of a boxing match in this game number one. And uh, yeah, caught out on the invade there. Uzi starts up on that W, gets himself first blood. Isn't able to spend the gold just yet, but uh, shouldn't really matter. He's on this wave by himself, so he's going to have a little bit of solo XP. To his name as well. Separated off and kind of pushed away. PP God looks for this triple knockup, but only finds two. Mako's not involved. When the crash down comes in, it's pretty big. But only finds two. And at this point, then it's just a bit of Armageddon. Like Abel's chasing down Fofo. Uzi flashes over the wall with the heal to then save Fofo. And then even though the knockup is pretty good here uh, from the side of Cream, not able to save Abel. And uh, Mako then ends up getting in the mix and giving away his life as well. So at the end of the day, the kills kind of fall into pretty important members in this game, right? For OMG, actually having Cream uh, have this extra kill could be huge in terms of hitting a, a couple of those earlier iron breakpoints, but also uh, for Uzi, picking up that first kill, if he can get back to base relatively soon, could be huge for the laning phase. Tristan, one of those old, like, classic uh, lane counters to Kai'Sa from back yeah. in the day. Excited to see how it gets on in lane one-to-one. -one. Especially without someone who's available to all of the crowd down at that bottom side. Uh, all eight summoners were used in the last engage. As, as you mentioned, Cream was able to go back and get a dagger, but Uzi unable to return just yet. With a hard push, we'll see what happens uh, with that reset and what timing he can find. As Jeje, not sure if he was spotted out here and crossing over to the top side, but Aki, they believe he was, as he'll be crossing, trying to optimize that bottom lane. Pings are coming in as EDG are hard pushed. EDG. Push. Like you said, no flash either member. Mako, I think, is likely going to be the target here. I feel like Uzi should be a little bit too hard to get. Hex flash into the bush. Q, kill Mako. Oh, danger. Easy setup. Yeah, okay. Mako, just like that, going to die. And trying to buy some time at the very least. Uzi will have time with the wave as uh, Mako is playing the dirty. But Abel will be able to pick up this kill. So, one apiece here in our AD matchup. And a great time gank from Aki means that those summoners are indeed missed. Yeah, exactly. All from that level one. OMG want to keep the tempo high in this game. And I mean, I feel like both teams do, but maybe as OMG, like you've got such a geared to dive composition, right? 
theoretically, as EDG, it's actually not that bad to allow OMG to just kind of dive into you, right? There's Pot Blossom, there's, uh, of course, the Gravity Well. I always feel like Grell has traditionally been a, a much better counter engage option as opposed to a follow up. Uh, so we'll see how that gets on us. There's a well time gank in the bottom side. GG. Looking for it on you give the top side. Yeah, exactly. What a shame. A little bit too right, hard. Well. I mean, just backs on the ward as well. Yeah, no big deal. Off he pops. No, no. Because <laughs> he knows. He knows JJ's not here anymore. Doesn't have to care. I'm trying to wonder if Ale isn't as well. I mean, teleport not available for Shanji. He burns it after the level one. Uh, Ala has his own, but uh, we'll actually burn it now instead of walking it out towards that top side. But we'll say, uh, focusing here on the lanes quite heavily because after those early leads, we want to see who scales ahead. Jamada, Cream is doing quite fine in this lane that we talked about. Uh, being a little bit painful until we get to that six point, but he's kept yeah. up in CS. Fofo doesn't have TB, he has to walk to lane as he's now just backed away, so Cream will be able to deny some of the wave. I feel like for OMG, this early game is going as well as you could hope. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember the last time I saw a melee matchup into Nico go even in CS. You know, like, it's it's pretty pretty absurd that Cream is able to keep up by the expectations I've seen set by plenty of matchups in the past. Though, I will say those have been, like, champions like Akali and uh, Kiana that really can struggle into this poke. Whereas on the Yone, a couple more defensive options, right? The mobility of that third Q, the W as well, to kind of shield away some of that damage probably does help curb some of the poke. Nico can have up and available into you as a melee champion as JJ is on this dragon and he does have lane set up from this mid lane and this should be a pretty easy pickup because I feel like OMG the only way they get in is a straight up flip and Arki does not seem interested in that whatsoever. Not at all. Screaming with ulti. What are you going to do at this point with just boots available as first dragon goes over to EDG. And I want to mention that Uzi in this early game was able to pick up Noon Quiver from the gold back. But remember that Abel got some as well from the kill. And because of that, was able to pick up the Kachea's Shard as well as the Noon Quiver on top of the Zaki. Just spotted out by JJ over the wall he goes. After watching IG and Weibo, their explosive early games, especially on IG's side, this feels like we've just gone to, to Betty Bye Bye's. Like, this completely different feel. Even though we've already had three kills, I think it's slow. Mm -hmm. Like, we how is that LCK. possible? We're, we're, yeah. we're, actually, we're actually Atlas and, uh, you know, Chronicler. Who are you? Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> this is what's going on here now. Uh, yeah, I will say, obviously, pretty big juxtaposition between uh, hmm. our second series of the night and the opening here. All time rocket jump from Uzi. Uh, I'm kind of curious about how this Herald prioritization is going to go from both sides. Uh, JJ with Paranoia is always going to have really easy target access. I feel like it's more about how Fofo is able to actually find a, a big angle if there is a rotation up from OMG here. Um, or maybe they just kill Kree. And that's maybe. the Pop Blossom. Oh, Fate oh. Sealed buffers it though. He's out. Yeah. Nicely done from Kareem. Yeah, Ulma for Ulma. Um, feel like as Nico, you need that Ulma skirmish here at that Herald. Whereas as Yone, you always have, you know, those knockouts coming through from the Q3. This could just be an outright EDG win. Just the fact that they trade out those ultimates. I mean, rather OMG win if they decide to contest it, rather. EDG are the ones mm -hmm. that are on the objective first. It's first move as well from Abel and PP God. Just the issue is Mako's ahead of both of them. Just depends who influences the top side more. As ulti's used, Shanti finds it. There's Paranoia. Lay it on top. As you said, that Yone is into it, but they all collapse <laughs> um, down and Mako's here. The rel difference huge as Cream forces out a flash from JJ. Rather, Fofo out the backside, but to no avail, he's shoved against the wall. And Shanji finds his mark. It's a trade here, and might even be more as Mako now in trouble. The needlework trying to save the support, and it might do some damage, but Cream still finds it. Arla can't get the trade off, and OMG with the bigger punch. And guess what? EDG might have got the Herald, but now you have a 2-0 and zero. Yone. Yeah, yeah, 2-0 now. Two kills on top of this Yone. Extra one from this Herald. It's a bit of an awkward exchange, though, because you could really tell <laughs> if we will get a replay. I'm sure we will. Cream was trying to execute the Herald, but Arki's just di dying in the mix. EDG. Look, look, so Cream goes in. He's on top of the Herald. There's also the Skirmish here. Keeper's Verdict uh, does connect and send the uh, Gwen quite far back. But look, look at Yone. He's trying to hit the eye. It keeps on turning. And then Arki gets one shot by all the ZZ. And because he hits the eye, then 
means EDG are able to smite it away. But then the chase down is solid. Flash into the heroic charge here. Locks Fofo down. And then the continued chase down of, again, the mobility that Yone has. Spoke about how, in terms of how a team fight would look. As Yone, that fate sealed is an excellent tool, don't get me wrong, but not a necessary one to fight even this early on. Just because of how those champs work. And Fofo, not having the pop blossom, didn't mean that there wasn't really much of a response, you know, once he got dived on uh, on the retreat there. It's 2-0 though, Cream. As you mentioned, things going well here. It's a BF Sword start as well. So, folks, we're getting a bit more damage to follow suit as... Now for Peepy God as he hex flashes over the wall and just spots Mako, has a little dance. And OMG start converging in. JJ doing the same here on his Nocturne. And Paranoia is still down. Krim gets over the wall, but Fofo starts roaming around with Mako, who has decided to let Uzi be on his own for this yeah. game, as Mako has just decided to stay group. Uzi is a solo lane. I mean, he's... I was about to say, you know, he's... I mean, honestly, both AD carries level 7. Uzi's just really close to level 8, right, of all the solo XP. So, uh, it's huge. Mako will, at the very least, want to hit 6 kind of soon, right? Uh, perhaps for this next dragon. Uh, as he approaches the wave once again to just do exactly that. Things over. But, I think, taking a quick zoom out, I, I do feel like, as EDG, you're probably a little bit happier to fight as long as you don't get that pop blossom blown super early on. Or get engaged on by PP God, looking very aggressively. Collapses Ooh, here from JJ. Does. I mean, yeah, the paranoia going to be used in, and look, they just jump on Abel. Doesn't get a chance to play as Fofo teleported in as well. These are two quick kills for EDG, and that Nocturne always there to counter punch. Yeah, Nocturne. It's just so easy to set up that kind of player arc. I was about to say arc. Needs to kind of be a little bit more. Uh, aware, I suppose, of some of the states of his lanes. Was hovering around the mid lane looking for a play on Fofo, just couldn't find it in the end. As now Herald down in the bottom side. Isn't that... Isn't that Van? Van? Okay, yeah. all right. Well, Fofo is going to be questioned after that as uh, Mako dies. Cream then goes back to the original and gets who's waiting for him. It's on to Fofo. And another kill over to Yone. I think we need to question if Fofo is allowed to keep playing. Because, yes, that is indeed a banned move. That is... Did, did no one catch now. it? Like, referees included? They're just... <laughs> I, I mean, They're hey. just like, ah, we, we forget it. We're... Yeah, you know, look. He didn't really gain any kind of advantage anyway, so who cares, I guess. Uh, anyway, it's replay. Just, it's just bad. So, 07, yeah. goodbye, Fofo. <laughs> See you later, brother. There's no way that goes uh, unlooked at as, yeah. Engage, really solid. Lockdown comes in. And Abel cannot move. Uses some spells. Can't use the Olama even out. So very, very rough time. And again, how do you he... actually do it? How do you how do you helicopter? Um, I know how to uh, do the emote, the fake back, but what is the helicopter? Is it just I think the, it's the an same emote? Way you do the emote. I, I'm actually not entirely sure. Uh, but I'm pretty sure that the the mimic clones exactly what you do. Or rather the clone mimics yeah. exactly what you do. Probably the other said the other way around. Uh We'll see. We'll see but whether or why, not there's Why any would that be that. A, a thing, Jamada? Why I, I, the bloody hell would the developer. Why would we have Nico, is, who. It extends the timer of the clone as well, by the way, if you base or emote. Uh, why is that a thing? Why do we think. Why? why? All I can say is there's uh, an emote in Twitch chat called Riot for a reason. And it's for most ah. like that. That's, that's, that's my official answer. Nothing more, nothing less. It's, it is weird. Do you know what though? The best part about the emote is, it's it's that noise. It's the, it's the ch -ch 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 -ch. I don't know if it does it on the English yeah. side. I don't know if that sound like strip is exactly the same, but in the Chinese client, it sounds really goofy. Yeah. Well, I mean, English side gets Chinese client anyway. But it's just we just get the English announcer, as you do on a Chinese feed as well, for some reason. Because I I know uh, playing solo queue in China, I'm pretty sure actually. English announcer as well? No. I don't know. I'm going to leave that out. I played a little bit of solo queue when I last went for Spring Finals, but oh, yeah. I can't remember enough. As, uh, it's time to stop talking about that because Second Herald is coming up, and that is a Gale Force Yone already. He's helicoptering again. Is Fofo Wait, just like, uh, guys? I looked away for half out. a second. Did he do it again? Do he did okay. it again. Hmm. <laughs> he did it again. <laughs> What a chat. This guy's like, you know what? If I, if you don't want me doing it, don't put it in the game. 
I kind of agree. Yeah. You tell him, Fofo. You let him know. He's just like so far in the deep end already. He just doesn't care. He's just gonna keep doing it. <laughs> no, but the, I like. Hmm. Maybe, maybe it was unbanned. I I don't know. It's can you guys do the herald inside of the pit? <laughs> At least they didn't. <laughs> oh, I did though. It's enough it to did bring OMG set. closer. Yeah, OMG can actually contest this now. Oh, give it a break. Surely not. Oh, a bit of British to get us into this. There's our oh. Bofo just dead. And JJ flashes over. And with that small reset, it is a massacre. Mako chased out, but the Herald goes to OMG. And a quick kill. That's just, that's heartbreaking. It's just a disappointing one from ETG. I mean, at the leash range is there as well. I'm pretty sure you can see it in game. We definitely get that purview as like the spectator. Uh, but either way, OMG now, the Herald, they're just gonna break mid lane tier one. And again, fashion of safety, a uh, place where you can now catch the waves up high, rotate earlier than EDG, keep them really pinned into their side of the map. As Cream's even gonna get this tier one up here as well. So massive influx of gold going in to OMG right here. Not only from the cheeky kill, but also the Herald. And those two towers, minions will do the job. Cream was a little bit uncertain about whether or not he would get that localized gold. As, yeah, I, they can see the patience bar. It's not like they don't know it's going to reset. <laughs> like, oh, God, it's on a ward as well. Yeah, I think so, they were trying to OMG do it out everything. of the pit, maybe. But, like, even then, if you're OMG, you're just looking in the pit. Oh, no, the Herald's not in the pit. Let's go take a look, guys. Uh... As yeah, re-engage comes in. A great Q flash here onto Fofo. He can't respond. Ulmer as well. Practically perfect CC. Not able to basically do anything. Can teleport comes in just to confirm JJ's flash out of the pit as well. Really clean from OMG. No response from EDG after that Herald resets. OMG up 2,000 gold. EDG with a, uh, I wouldn't say quiet early game here. Shimada, but since that skirmish, it's been really rough to see how they can pull the trigger. I mean, we've seen everyone pick up their item now. Second one almost for Uzi. We know they have damage, but OMG just aren't giving them to the position where they get these perfect CC chain off this perfect fight. Maybe in front of this next dragon. That's where we see OMG uh, step up and the Nico, the Nocturne, all the tools we know EDG have come alight again. Yeah, exactly, and again, they can afford to be engaged on by OMG. They can also look for the engages as well. Fofo, Flash, Ulmer available, looking for an angle on the side. But Shanji, yeah. Aki, off on those sides as well. Again, multiple flanks. Angle. Oh, Shanji decides to send someone sideward. It's uh, Ale in the end, but Fofo as he flies in, finally gets that pop blossom down, but the fate is sealed. Cream runs on in and OMG had the angles, had the damage, and now they're playing it front to back. Abel jumps on in against his predecessor, and the rest is history. Behind him on RNG, Abel cleans house in Uzi's face, and EDG are now starting to get wiped in this early game of game one. Abel steps up big, but OMG as well, just a well-executed team fight on multiple fronts. Shanji knocks away Allah, and as soon as he's out of the team fight for the very start of it, immediate collapse comes in from every single member of OMG. They pounce on who they can, they find Uzi, that's all they really need, even though Fofo's, you know, engage looked pretty all right. The fact that it was only really onto the frontliners of PP God and Shanji meant that there wasn't really a strong enough answer from EDG to really warrant a continued fight here as Keeper's Verdict. Again, onto Arla. Really strong. OMG. Then kick off the fight. The disengage from EDG is good. And then this re-engage from Fofo again. Solid, but only being onto the tanks means that Abel and then here, this fate seal. Locking down two members is absolutely massive. And eventually it gives enough space for Abel to find his mark. PP God, insane flash W as well. Uzi just jumped on. As I said, the rest is history. And you know what, Jamati? You know what this, this made me think about? How God. good OMG are this season. Imagine if they go to Worlds. And then international casters finally have to say PP God on an international <laughs> broadcast. We've been waiting years. For this magical day just imagine you know I we've know. gone through it we've gotten used to it but they will have to say pp on an international riot broadcast 
I know exactly which casters wouldn't be able to keep a straight face out as well. I just, I've got a list in my head right <laughs> now. At, at the people that just couldn't keep it together. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Let's get OMG to world. Yeah, screw it. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's, let's just have everyone oh, say yeah. PP Eagle. Yeah, why not? Oh, I'm down. Man. Now, for anyone who needs context, because they're also a 12 year old boy or girl like me, um, PP stands for Pung Pung Shun. Now, Pung Pung is PP God's name. Uh, last name, I believe. And Shun in Chinese means God, right? So Peng Peng, So he's calling himself a God. Just so that the context here is yep. there and so that people understand <laughs> that he's not also 12 years old. That the name does have merit behind it, all right? <laughs> uh, look, at the very least, it needed to be explained. Please, yep. please don't fire me again. Every broadcast, <laughs> again? Is like there's another way. Not again. No, not again, but you know what I mean. You know, every uh, broadcast, oh. there is a way where I, I play with fire. Some things brought up that maybe shouldn't be. But mm -hmm. hey, LPL's wild. I'm wild. I'm 28 years old, and I act like I'm 16. I, you know, hey, I drink I my mean, first drink at, at a pub, and I'm like, oh, this is great. You know? You know? I agree. I'm, I'm 24 now. I'm still technically the, the Zuma on the LPL. Well, actually, yeah, there's, you know, I'll, I'll say it. I'm still like the Zuma in the group. But man, I, I feel like I'm getting older, Jake. It's not great. I don't know how you feel True. being 28 and like married and stuff. Oh. The, the, well, do you, being do you married, make the groan? No, I'm, I'm happy being married. What the hell? I'm happy hey, being man. married, bro. The, all right, the, all right. Here's the real question to test your age. Do you make the groan yet when you get up? Oh, and you I know do. what I mean. I, oh, I yeah. did do oh, leg day man. like a couple of days ago, and I, you know, I I squat and I I did the full run around, and now like the past couple of days, I am groaning getting up. Yes. <laughs> That's how you know, man. That's the sign. That's the, that's the universal. The gym. That's the, I don't normally groan getting up. Unless I run out a cup of tea and I'm upset, then I groan. And I have a little bit of a groan because, yeah, there are some old man tendencies. I clear my throat. <laughs> you know, when yeah. young people are, are playing around in the shopping mall. Oh, man, that gets oh, me angry. Oh, those, those kids those, having fun making They're on school holidays, memories. but they should show respect. You know, in, in the Westfield Shopping Centre, show some respect. You know, just because you're on holidays doesn't need to be bloody delinquent. Anyway, um, being 70 years old is not important because OMG is starting to barren. While Arla has TP, he got bot side turret, but Jamada, EDG are far away from this. No vision yet. JJ needs a target to jump in, but it's gone How down How fast quick. is this? Observers, turn the Baron back on. This 5k, Five. it's gone. Like, surely, right? JJ has to get a ward in the pit and hope he can get in, but that's not going to happen. It's just gone. What? All right, well, there's Mako's ulti, but EDG, you're slow to the party. Is oh. Green. Ulti's enabled, flies through. His predecessor taken out again. Flashes over. Abel's still okay. The old RNG sub is nailing EDG here with a triple kill. He is enabled. He is emboldened by his mid laner cream to dive in onto Uzi. Finds the angle again. Uh, excellent fate sealed means that the killer instinct is certainly there for Abel, perhaps taking notes from his old mentor. And OMG, I mean, it's just it, like, it, it starts off as just basically a bait, an attempt to get some resources out of EDG, right? That's my read on the situation. But then EDG just take forever to respond. And then yeah. Cream comes out from the back of the pit, finds the fate sealed onto Uzi. Hello. How much damage does he do by himself? It's like a ridiculous Ooh. amount. And then Abel just one shots him <laughs> next to the CC. Insane. Great flash. W as well. Extra bit of chunk damage onto Fofo. And again, oh, man. excellent snipe. Gives him the triple kill. Earned every single scalp that he got there. Now, OMG, third dragon of the game. And EDG on the back foot wholeheartedly. So much gold. But this gold lead has just crept up very silently. Yeah, 7,000. Uh, Arlo might be dead. Arlo might be dead here. Yeah. Uh, almost dies then again as uh, Mako's tagged away. There's the engage from Peepy God. He tanks Tara for a little bit, has now traveled through, but Abel is just using the range here with the two items, fighting target after target. Of course, Arla's too far gone, but OMG with another kill with Baron. Now, Jamani, you talk about the gold bleed sneaking up. This is going to be 9k in a second as they find this inhibitor turret. Yeah, and the inhibitor to boot. They've even got a wave to work with in the middle. Oh, yucky. It's not, it's not yeah. ideal. Agreed. That's, a, that's an old man getting up for sure. Arla, would you like to go back to base? I guess he would. Because uh, OMG take another inhib turret just from that. 10k, just about. EDG are getting 
screamed in this game. I'm allowed to Not say that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, it, it's no. mid later. They, they are indeed. Yep. They're getting uh, enabled. They're getting creamed. <laughs> they're getting charged. It is completely fine. Huh? There's a... Uh... You know, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to move on and say that OMG yeah, can go will. push in the top side. Uh, I will not I will not be the Twitch chat. I know what's going to happen in, in certain Twitch chats. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be that guy. OMG can close out this game quite comfortably. Move up to the top side. Open up the base there. Wait for the supers to do their thing. And uh, yeah, that, that should just be the game. I feel like EDG might be a little bit too far behind in this one. Three items across the board for the carries. And then on the top side here of OMG as well, two items. Whilst that parry of GAG and Arla, they've just not really been able to, you know, show off their oh muscles boy. like how they were in game number one earlier on. They have a suspicion. Yeah. This is a bait. This is a ruse. EDG realized, wait a second, maybe we shouldn't be here. Paranoia used to get out, but GAG has to burn the flash straight away afterwards. He's knocked back, knocked up. It's Fofo the same. The fate sealed again. Creme de la creme gets out with the kill as GAG almost dies to Abel. Poking his way through. The 10 stacks of the Dark Seal hurting on top of the three items. As OMG, this game one is theirs. Uzi is nothing in the face of this young man. And OMG, what a class act to put on here in this first game of the series. Yeah, this is such a better look for OMG. I was starting to be worried on their two lost streak, the tailspin. I was hoping that the bounce back would be in the AL series, prepped and ready for EDG. But it seems like those extra days rest paying off dividends triple inhibitor now and edg i'd say they're on their last legs but i think that was about five minutes ago when they gave up the baron nexus towers under siege they have to pull the trigger they just have to hope that they can win a team fight they really do towers are dead uh, both at least trying that's a three man uzi jumps on in they might have a target Ooh. here Hellfire's whittling down a scream goes to ga but remember ga is all it is is denied is Mako from hopping on top of abel meanwhile everyone else getting charged up there is no disengage only Zool, only Abel, and only OMG for a game number one win. Go away, EDG, they say. You're not worth our time. Not worth it. Oh, that was a slaughter by the end of that game. Number one, and OMG looking like their old selves when they're